Alright, World Championships has been happening this week. This is the men's elite is on Sunday. So I'm going to look at the other races, what's happened in that, and how I think this race is going to play out. So you can see the men's race basically follows a pretty similar pattern to most of the other races. Just easy rolling circuit, nothing too challenging. Then this uh, 6K climb, no, 9K climb at 6%. Uh, it takes about 20, 20 minutes more or less for the top guys. Um, and then it basically has this last part here. So you can see this is the different, like how many times they do it. Um, and then basically they have this really steep climb which reaches about 17% for five, about 500 meters, I believe. Um, or maybe it's 13% 500 meters. Basically well over 10% for a decent amount of time. So anyway, these are some of the guys competing. So we've got, we've got Sagan, Van Aam, Matt Wellens. Uh, it's going to be interesting what happens there. France, they've got uh, Alaphilippe. It's Liga Nibli, Pozzovivo, Moscon, Spain, Valverde, uh, Britain, got Yates, and that's about it, really. Um, James Knox as well, <laughs> love that man. And then Netherlands, De Moulin, uh, Colombia, uh, Iran, Quintana's not going to do anything. Um, Australia, again, they're fucked, they don't have anyone. Uh, Denmark, I think Fuglesang will do well. Germany, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe what's his face? Uh, Bookman might be able to pull something out. Slovenia, um, again, speed like Roglic, decent. Poland, uh, Kwiatkowski, I think it's too hilly for Bosen Hagen. Uh, Dan Martin might do all right. Kroizek Estibar, again, decent. Portugal, uh, Costa, Zacharine can't descend, so he's going to not be in the contention. Youngles, again, solid, but I'm not sure it really suits him. The rest of these guys, I mean, there's a couple of like, rogue people like Woods, uh, Kirienko, I mean, it's not, it's not going to happen. Shvetkov, um, and then these are you know, these are all the rest of them are not really going to win. So it's mainly just climbers versus GC man, uh, and we're now going to watch all the other <clears throat> races so far. All right, so we'll start off with the junior women. They were first. So 6.7K to go. And yeah, so this is basically what is happening. Sorry, I'm just trying to turn the sound off. Um, so the highlight video is really bad, but basically this race came down to a sprint, four up sprint, as you can see here. Um, and I believe the former mountain biker who uh, from Austria won. So pretty soft for her. Her number placement could be slightly better. But anyway, basically that was a sprint, uh, pretty decisive, pretty selective sprint, but still a sprint nonetheless. Now we have the men's juniors, which if you didn't know, Remco, Evan Pohl absolutely dominated everyone, crashed, came back from two minutes. Look at that ridiculous cadence because they have such small gears. And Remco, Evan Pohl, takes the easy win and is an absolute legend, that man. You know, started cycling like two years ago and is already signing for quick step floors. So that's when you question what you're doing with your life. Making YouTube videos is the answer. But anyway, decent S works there. I'm an old team bike from quick step floors, I believe. So anyway, that basically, again, finished in solo, vi solo victory for him. Uh, we're then going to move on to the men's under-23 race. There's no women's under-23 race, but I think they might be starting one soon. Anyway, basically, this Swiss bloke, we'll go back a little bit, but basically, there was, like, strang out on the climb. Then the Swiss bloke, Swiss bloke decided that it was time to launch it on the downhill, uh, attacked on the downhill, as you can see here. A lot of top two descending, some crazy highlights that I can't really see what's going on, some good TT action, and he basically soloed it to the win. Again, that was very selective, but basically, people just end up being the strongest riders just attacked on the last hill. The women's race, I'm not sure if you've seen it, but Van der Bregen... Basically, Van Vluten attacked a lot, uh, really stretched out. Then there was a leading group of like Amanda Spratt, Corinne Rivera, and a couple other people. Um, and she basically, Van der Breggen just bridged that gap real easy, went across, uh, drove the thing. Spratt was still on it for a little bit, then attacked, and then that was basically it. So it was very solid um, from Van der Breggen and just soloed at home. Uh, so yeah, that basically we had a bunch sprint and solos every other time. So for me, I think it, I think the men's though, there's only, there's, well, there's one big difference with the men's and that's the strength of the team. In the women's event, the only people who have really a strong team is the is the Netherlands. Um, so they, basically their tactic is just to get as many riders up the road, constantly attack, which they did very well. But uh, Australia, for instance, or other, other countries like which have decent representation, I think Belgium did as well, Spain, oh no, Poland did, I think. Um, they don't really have the strength of numbers to match it. However, the men's, obviously, it's far more even. Uh, even I mean, you've got basically Belgium, France, Italy, Spain, GB, Netherlands, Colombia, Australia, I think all have um, nine riders. So that, that therefore means, uh, I'm not sure if we have the start list, but I believe they have nine riders. So that means it's going to be a far easier for them to control it. Uh, you can see here, um, Sagan has a couple boys, but I mean, they're not going to help. Italy's got some real solid guys. Netherlands, Spain, Great Britain, France. Colombia, Australia, Denmark, Slovenia, they've all got a lot of guys and there are a lot of solid teams and I think that is the reason why I do not think it will be as selective as the other races and I think what will happen is that uh, on the last climb there'll be a group of potentially four or five left, they will then descend the hill, go on to this last little thing and I think maybe 
only two will be strong enough. Some will attack on the top of that. And I think it will be a, a sprint of maybe only three, um, two or three. That would be my prediction. I don't think anyone will be strong enough to solo because this climb is actually quite fast. It's only 6%. I'll be going 25 Ks an hour up there. So unless there's a real raging tailwind, it will just be too easy to follow the wheels, which is why I think it's going to be selective, but not as crazy as the other ones. And I think it will come down to a bunch sprint of just a couple riders. And in that case, my favorite is Jenny Muscon. I really think he's going to do it. It might be too hard for him. Uh, it just depends how it's raced. But for me, I really think he's got a great chance. Um, the only way I could see it not happening is as if Columbia and Quintana and the boys just drill every single one of these climbs. So every single one, they just ride full gas up it, like burn one rider off. And then that will change it significantly. But I don't think they'll be doing that. And that is why, for me, Jani Moscon is the favourite. And I think, and then close behind is Kwiatkowski, Dan Martin, Valverde, uh, Alaphilippe. Uh, will Sagan make it over? I, I, it just depends. I think a lot of people will have a, a lot of incentive to keep the pace incredibly high and really try and stretch Sagan. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. What are your predictions for the World Championships? Will you be watching the whole race from start to finish? I will definitely not be because I have a hill climb race um, on Sunday. But I am really looking forward to try and get the extended highlights and watch as much as I can over the next couple of days because it will definitely be a race to remember. And I think it's going to be one of the hardest world championships for a long time. Anyway, cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next video.